I got. I don't know what clip dog is, but that's what it says. Yeah. That's cool. He said they were trying to knock this place down. The city was trying to knock this place down. Really? So as many people as they can get to come here, sign a petition, make sure they keep this place. So the, the gentleman who runs um, Farm and Food Lab, Nathan Gipple. So the Farm and Food Lab was born out of the vision of the city of Irvine in partnership with the Orange County Master Gardeners and several other uh, groups. And uh, the site is about 12 years old now. And again, it started off with just some raised hay bale beds and it uh, transitioned into some raised beds. And then as of three years ago, we were fortunate enough to uh, take over uh, with an operating contract and we've been able to grow out the site significantly. We being solutions for urban agriculture. Uh, we're 501c3. We've been doing Farm and Food Bank in the city of Irvine here for now over 30 years. And it's just been an amazing collaborative partnership with the city, getting food to those who need it most, and also spreading education, which is part of our nonprofit mission. So it's just been an adventure. I love that. I feel like that's what I see happening here is they're, they're coming up with different solutions for agriculture in, in urban areas. Okay. So that's, um, sometimes like you'll see, I forgot what they're called, but there's like two dimensional trees where they prune them in the front and they prune them in the back. So uh -huh. the tree is like- Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. over there. We saw yeah. those. It's like crab apples or something over there. Crab apples? Yeah. These are like the small ones. They grow like this big. Yeah, but like That's from training, yeah. yeah. That's dope though, how they did it, like he, someone topped it right here, took those two, wrenched them all out. That's dope. Yeah, so yeah. stuff like that, and then like, uh, how can you grow things in a small area? Or what are some things you can grow in an urban area that you didn't even know you could grow? And. Uh, and there was a gentleman here before, if you've seen the movie Need to Grow, the Need to Grow, um, he was here growing food for a while, um, Eric Cutter. In the middle of May last year, this was basically a big dirt field. This picture shows us approximately five square miles, but that kind of space couldn't be built just in one thing in LA County. The dream of buying is that we take this and turn it into small gardens of Eden. In about 10 months, we've completely changed the face of this place and created this incredible level garden. This farm has given me an opportunity to kind of experiment and showcase my talent and take chances. I was experimenting with vertical gardens in 2009 because a lot of my clients had said, food is a great amenity, how do we bring some food out to these islands? And I thought, well, even though you're in Bora Bora, French Polynesia, where it rains a lot, nobody's collecting water. So I started looking at these systems for them and then realized, oh my god, my own backyard is painfully in need of these systems. And I thought, you know, what if we could find vertical gardening tools, high efficiency tools, so we get people to start using them? But uh, he's not here anymore, but he's another solutions for urban agriculture. He does a lot of, like, growing plants vertically mm. or, um, maybe growing plants so that you water the top plant and then water trickles down to the mm -hmm. next one and to the next one so you're saving water as well mm. so good that's really cool is that corn is that corn over there that looks like it mm. the thing is i'm mostly at the worm farm <laughs> 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 so i know i never really know what's going on over here okay okay so here's the two books we recommend bookstore in tustin right now Um, I, okay, I am going to get, I'm going to ask you to do a very serious science experiment. Ah, what a fine day for science. And the reason why, the, so I'll tell you what the science experiment is, but the reason why I want you to do this is because worm composting is one, the easiest way of composting, but two, composting is so important. It's so important because one, have you, any of you ever been to a landfill? Yeah. They're super stinky. Mm -hmm. And that stinky smell that we're smelling is actually toxic chemicals, off-gassing into the environment, causing a heat trap and blanket around the world that's like causing heat to stay in the planet. Mm -hmm. I know some of that is carbon dioxide from the cars we drive and the airplanes and gasoline and probably mostly big business type things going on and like, you know, what the average citizen does might be a drop in the bucket, but you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, so other compounds are like methane and nitrous oxide, and these are smells that can come out of our compost piles, but they definitely come out of, um, the landfills. And so if we, instead of throwing our food in the trash and mixing all that trash and it doesn't ever really break down very well, we can break down ourselves and then we can turn that into really good fertilizer, like healthy fertilizer, like my job. I don't make a lot of money doing it, but one of my side jobs is to look at people's soil under a microscope and say, 
what who's in there, like what microbes are in there. And when I look at like Miracle Pro, that stuff works well, but um, it just works in a different way than how a soil in a forest works. When I look at forest soil versus Miracle Pro, I can see the differences. And the forest soil is teeming with life, and all these things. Um, they're part of the food web and like so, you know, they're the bottom of the food chain and they're the decomposers like taking all of our trash up here and turning it into life again. So compost is where trash, death means life. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very essential part of nature. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so when we throw our food in the landfill, it kind of disrupts that cycle. So, um, so anyway, when we compost, instead of methane like being released, it actually gets stored into the soil. And, it, and carbon gets stored, stored into the soil, and then plants are healthier. And when, um, when all those soil organisms are there, they can actually help keep plants healthier, and then the food we eat actually ends up being more nutritious and nutrient dense. And then, so when you have healthy plants, you have healthy people, and that's really exciting to me. <laughs> oh, and I'm not in the camera, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So yeah, that's really exciting to me. So that's, that's why I'm here. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, that's why I'm here with you guys, and that's why um, that's we do this as a hobby. This is like what we do for fun, telling yeah. people about compost. <laughs> now, why like why I want you to experiment with worm composting is because it's the easiest type of composting. It's the most hassle-free. You can forget about it, especially if you do the underground worm bins. I'm sorry about all these flies. No, 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 it's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's nature. I mean, I yes, it. <laughs> it's true. I like that. So, um, so. The underground worm bin, for example, you could use something like this and you could put it underground and then make your own, make your own lid. <laughs> okay, um, so the experiment is, I'm going to lead you through a series of questions for fun and a lot of times we do this with kids, but adults enjoy it. And um, I'm going to teach you how to take care of worms. Okay, And then every time you build a worm bin, you're going to follow these same instructions. And then if you forget, you can just take a picture of the instructions over here, mm -hmm. and then um, and then you, you'll remember. So every time you make a worm bin, the first question we would say is, oh, I forgot to tell you the experiment. Sorry, the experiment is, I'm gonna give you four worms, Thank you. and after three months, they're gonna double in population. Mm. So, cause that's what worms do when they're happy. So if in three months, if they double in population, how many worms are you gonna have? Eight. Eight, yes. For some reason, when I do this, four worms, three months, double the population, it really throws people off. <laughs> um, so, okay, so, oh, and then when you're done with your experiment, we're hoping that you will put it on, you will mention us on Instagram or Facebook at We Compost 2. That is our nonprofit organization.